to you. Those of you that are with us physically and those of you that are joining us online. I just want us to remain in a prayerful mode. The Holy Spirit has made it known unto me that he's going to be speaking to your hearts prophetically concerning the hour and the time that we're in. A very good afternoon, good evening to you from wherever you are joining us. Um, kindly indicate for us where you are joining us from. Uh, invite somebody to come and hear the word of the Lord for them in this day. And I trust that the word will speak to you, to your situation. It will help you um, in your walk with the Lord. It will help you to better understand the covenant that you have gotten yourself into. It will help you better understand um, your journey in this world. It will better make you better understand the situations that you are in and what God has to say about every single one of them. It will answer some of your questions, if not all your questions, that the Lord may help you in situations that no man can help you. So kindly log in. Do let us know from where you're joining us. And whoever the Spirit of the Lord puts in your heart to invite to hear the word of the Lord, do exactly that. For there's no better gift that we can give to one another other than the word of the living God. For it brings life and life in abundance into our lives. So kindly do those two things beloved and do let me know if you can hear me properly before we proceed to the word of the lord for the day do let us know if you can hear us properly if my voice is not being overpowered by the background instrumental music and if you can hear me well together so far beloved I'm just going to give you two more minutes to get settled in to invite somebody to come and hear the word um, some of you are saying I'm audible so I'll trust that that is the report for all of you I'm going to give you two more minutes to gather each other to come and hear the word of the Lord for the day while you are doing that do stay in prayer do stay in prayer it is very important to always be prayerful not only during the time that we come to break bread but at all times in your spirit man to keep the enemy out of your mind to keep the accuser out of your mind the thief the killer from coming to destroy that which God is building in your life. It is very important to stay in the spirit. It's not an occasion. It's not something that we do once in a while. It is a lifestyle. So it is very important to keep. That keeps your spirit and your heart open to that which God is saying and that which God is doing. So that when we come together in fellowship, what you are getting is merely a confirmation and edification and addition to that which the Lord has already been speaking to you about during the course of the day or during the course of the week. So let us get into that habit of always, always engaging the Lord on a daily basis as often as we possibly can. If we spend more time with the Lord, majority of the problems that we have, majority of the questions that we have, would be resolved because Holy Spirit carries all answers. Holy Spirit carries all answers to every question that is lingering in our minds, in our heart, in our spirit. So when we do that, 
we are able to hear from the one that speaks truth and nothing but truth in our lives. So I trust that we are well. I trust that we are well kept by the Lord. Um, before I get to this word, and I do believe that there's a link between the word that God wants me to share with you in this day and the vision that he gave me this morning, which I briefly shared with you uh, this morning as per instructed by the Holy Spirit. So before we get to the scriptures and the word that God wanted me to uh, expound on, that is very critical for the hour that we are in, I want to take some time to uh, break down the vision that God gave me this morning. It was a very, very profound vision, very important, very timely, very much needed in the time that we're in. So for those of you that... Uh, so it let me see if I can retrieve it or maybe I should just share it as the spirit needs because it is still very much fresh in my spirit by reason of the fact that it was given this morning can you kindly reduce um, the volume it's a bit I, it, it's not overpowering them but I feel like it's a bit too loud for me yes thank you Hallelujah. Uh, the reason why it's like I am stalling is because I'm trying to allow as many of you as possible to log in to hear the word so that you don't uh, that I, I am permitted to share with you but the Lord made it very clear that this was a corporate uh, message which was for all of us so like I said it's very encouraging if you understand it so I just want to <coughs> take you through it that the Lord may speak to you uh, in this very very message that he has given us for this time and for this hour that we are in. So, in this vision, it was very clear the time that we are in. I'm just going to take us a little bit back so that we have an understanding um, of what I'm talking about and how it relates to us and where we are in this at this point in time so i've uh, made a statement concerning 2020 that um as much as god from the very beginning of uh, my calling he's always been very very audible from the very very beginning even before i started reading the scriptures he spoke very clearly um and I knew and I understood that it was by grace. Um, it was something that was being done by heaven for a purpose. It had nothing to do with my own personal seeking, but it had everything to do with the assignment upon my life and the necessity for me to hear him clearly uh, for the message that has to go forth in this time, the alarm that has to go forth in this time. So, as much as he'd been uh, very audible and very clear throughout the years, 2020, however, was uh, a year of a great shift, a very significant shift, even in terms of how, how well I could hear the Lord. Um, he would speak in great lengths, and it was at a time where he even availed and made sure that there was someone to take down his word because there was no way I could be able to take down that word myself. Um, 
so in 2020 god gave a very clear understanding of what we are seeing transpiring in the time that we're in and in years to come and during that time the lord spoke as though it was to happen then there were a lot of things that god spoke and it wasn't just through me um there are certain individuals certain servants of god as well that have heard a similar word even though it's not word for word um, especially in the united states of america and the lord even uh highlighted certain individuals that at the time i had not uh yet seen or i had not come across yet even on social media or in uh, these platforms that we have media pl platforms uh, God would speak through my spirit man um, to make me aware of certain individuals that he has called in this very time uh, for this very assignment of speaking his word into existence that is going to take us from this era into the new era that he we are entering and the great changes that are coming with the new era especially where leadership is concerned and especially where wealth is concerned the lord has made it very clear that what we are seeing is a war between the greatest war yet between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light and it's a fight for positions and I'm going to talk about the importance of positions as well as we get into this vision because it is very important to understand why God wants to put you where he wants to put you. In fact, it is the one thing that guarantees that God will put you in those very positions or in that very position that he is calling you to. And it is precisely the same reason why certain individuals have to be removed from certain seats or certain positions. It's not because God loves you more than he loves those individuals. It has nothing to do with preference. It has nothing to do with you as a person. But it has everything to do with assignment. It has everything to do with God's agenda being established on planet earth as it is in heaven. God is simply looking for vessels that are usable in his kingdom. He is not looking for your personality. He is not looking for your appearance. He is not looking for anything to do with whatever it is that you may gauge as something that qualifies you. For certain things or for certain positions that God in this time has earmarked to put certain individuals there to push forward what he wants to do in this time. So in that year 2020, there's a lot that God said concerning nations, especially the nation of the United States of America and the nation of Israel. Not to say that these are the most two important nations for the sake of being important or for whatever reason, some of you may think because America is so well advanced in terms of technology, entertainment, um, and all of these things. So maybe that is why, no, nothing in this world can be, can be more advanced than what is in heaven because everything was made by God and everything is supposed to work according to the purposes of what God has made it for. And nothing of this world wows God. Nothing surprises him. There's nothing about this world that causes God to be at all or to be in awe of it simply because he knew everything before it was. He created everything. So that means he knows the end from the beginning. He has seen everything that man is yet to create which is not really creation, it's just using that which God has already made available by reason of the blueprints that he himself gives us so that we can continue to marvel at that which God has given us and see what can become of the raw materials that have been made available for us by the living God. But now we are in a time where humanity constantly wants to use the resources of God to push Satan's agenda or their own agenda 
at the negligence of that which heaven has declared for that hour. And there comes a time where God now says enough is enough. Where the cup of iniquity has now been filled up to the very brim. And God calls for a change to take place. God calls for current leaders that are not for his kingdom, that are not for his vision, that are not for his mandate, that are not for his plans to be overthrown so that those that will push his agenda and his assignment and his vision for the hour may be established in those very seats so that they can do exactly that. I've also mentioned the fact that God made it very clear in 2020 that this is not the end of times. Yes, I agree that no man knows the hour, no man knows the day. However, scripture lets us know that signs will be made available, that signs will be seen, that will indicate to mankind that now we are in the end and the spirit of the living God will witness to that and let the children or the remnant of the Lord or the bride of Christ know that it is time to get ready to be raptured. But God through his spirit that reveals the mysteries and the secrets of God that are to be made known to men at that hour has made it clear that the time that we are in is not the time of the mark of the beast. I will repeat myself. The time that we are in is not the time of the mark of the beast. However, we are in a time where Satan and all those that have agreed to be used by him or those that are being used by him ignorantly so are trying to push for this to happen. But God is saying, no one can frustrate my time. No one can frustrate my word. No one can frustrate my move. And whatever has been written in my holy word has to happen at the time that it has been ordained for it to take place. Now, now that we know that this is not that time, it's very important to know what time it is because it affects the decisions that you make. It affects how you carry yourself. It affects how you hear God. It affects how you respond to that which the Lord is saying at the time. Many a times we don't hear God properly because we are not attuned with the fullness of understanding of what time it is. And therefore, even when God speaks to our lives, we can barely hear him because we are not looking for answers to come from that direction. I don't know if we are together so far. So one may ask, then what time is it? What time are we in? And what exactly is expected of us in the time that we are in? The Lord has declared this time as the time of fullness. I'm going to say that again. He has declared the time that we're in as a time of fullness. What is fullness? The fullness of time, which means that we are in a time where we are to see the fullness of the redemptive plan of God. We're in a time where we are to see the fullness of what God the Father, the Son, and the Spirit have done to get you saved from eternal condemnation. We are in a time where we are seeing the fullness of the picture. That is why he said in the times, in the end times or in the fullness of time, knowledge shall flood the earth. We are in a time where the knowledge of God, which is the knowledge of his redemptive plan, where we are concerned, is being made known unto us. We are in a time where scripture, 
where it has been coded. We are in a time where we are decoding those scriptures, where mysteries are now being laid bare for men to know and to understand what has been hidden and what has been written of the time that we're in and of what God has made available for humankind. We're in a time where God is making or is laying truth bare for all to know and all to understand who he is. After all, he's a just God. There wouldn't be any, it wouldn't even make sense for us to be raptured at a time where people have so many questions about who God is. So many people don't even know him. So many people have been taught something different from what truth actually is. So many people have a distorted image of who God is. So it wouldn't make sense for us to be raptured at a time where humanity needs to know more than ever before who the living God is and what he has made available for those that will hearken to his word and for those that are ready to repent of the old ways and to actually be reconciled back to him. That is the time that we are in. Which brings me to my next point. Now, if we are to see this happen, we are to see the world being flooded with the knowledge of God, then we are going to need to have kings in place that will allow for the word of God to flow. Hallelujah. And what we are seeing, because God said we are in a time where we are going to see true colors coming forth in every single one of us. We are going to see true colors coming forth. So the same way God spoke in 2020, and I know many of you at that time because things were not yet exposed. Things were not yet clear. Individuals were still hiding their true intentions. When God spoke through his servants in 2020 and before that about the leaders that he has earmarked for this hour, many ridiculed what the Lord said. Many said it is not the word of the Lord because many were under great deception by those that, are, that, by those that masqueraded themselves at the time as those that were for the people but were actually not for the people or not for God's agenda. And now God says, because of the time that we are in, that calls for humanity to know me, that calls for humanity to know me, because of that hour that we are in, I am going to invade every system. I am going to invade every office of influence. I am going to invade every industry. I am going to invade the highest of positions. I am going to invade every place. I'm going to even invade your homes. I'm going to invade places that were never touched. I'm going to invade all things in the season. Nothing is off bounds in the time that we are in. He said every door in the season will swing open because the king of kings is here. The owner and the maker of the heavens and the earth who owns all things. The owner of all things is here. And he's going to set things in order. But now that we have proven ourselves, to be disobedient to the ways and that which God wants to do and the counsel of the Lord. He says, I myself will make sure that I invade all doors 
all places of power and authority. And I am going to enforce my will on earth as it is in heaven. Why? Because the hour demands it. The hour demands it. It's as simple as that. What God has ordained for the hour will not be frustrated. Hallelujah. It is only a matter of the time that has been set for that to take place. And for so for the past two years, meaning 2021 and 2022, what we have been seeing are signs for those whose eyes are open to see that this is a different time altogether. Those that are ready to see and to be part and puzzle of what God is doing by allowing that the eyes of understanding to witness to them what is truly happening, to see beyond the deception, to see beyond what we are seeing with our naked eyes, are able to see and to tell that there is a shift that has taken place in the time that we are in. Things are not the same, child of God. And for some of us, who have been given a certain word by the Lord in 2020. And now we are seeing the unfolding of that word in the time that we are in. No one can tell me otherwise. Because I'm literally seeing the unfolding of something God said two years back before my eyes on a daily basis. I get to see that. The other day after the Lord instructed me to give you that prophetic utterance concerning chariots of fire. This is a word he gave in 2020. And he said, share that word today. And I shared that word with you, where he spoke about the chariot of fire and the call, the chariot call. And talking about the fact that we are in a time where he's calling forth or we are in an hour where we are going to see coming forth those that are chariot riders as his servants. Because the time that we are in, it is not, it is not for those that claim to serve God but don't know the God they serve. Listen, if you don't know God, you cannot stand for his word. I'm going to say that again. If you don't know him, if you haven't taken time to allow him to reveal himself to you, because for some, they have pressed in, for him to reveal himself to them. For some, they are just called for the hour and he revealed himself to them. And I'm one of those. I really cannot take, uh, uh, I, I can't take credit for everything that I know from the Lord. I can't. Where I was spending in, in prayer and fasting and all of those things, yes, but I cannot possibly tell you that I know what I know because I pressed in so deep and so hard and I really cannot. It is by his grace for the hour that we are in and for him to establish and also to make a mockery out of the wisdom of man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he said, he said, he said it himself. If you don't praise me, I will raise the rocks to praise me. God can use anything that he chooses to use. Anything that he chooses to use. So that men may know. And this is one of the ways that he makes you know and understand that this can only be me. When hella how music ha no music at the hour ka buya tsone dio tsa di bwantsi. Ke ra hella from when you knew them growing up what did they say what they say. E go bala bala nanza bala bala but these things this has to be God. Hallelujah. It has to be God. He spoke about chariots of fire 2020. And recently, was it yesterday, we saw the clip, but the clip was from 10 days back, where in the news, they were talking about the fact that Israel is doing some drills at this point in time in Syria. 
and they have called the military drills that they're you they're doing at this current time chariots of fire you cannot tell me that is a coincidence you cannot especially looking at the time that we're in and god had having said it himself i will give you signs to let you know the time and the hour god spoke about flowers that have been dormant for the longest time coming forth springing forth the first time we gave this word publicly was last year there's a reason why I say publicly, because the word had been there, but we had not yet been given permission to share it with you. And then the year, last year, the Lord said, now the time has come for my people to know what is coming, for my people to understand the time that they're in. He made it clear that the flowers that had been dormant are very key for the cures to incurable diseases. Or diseases that have been declared incurable by reason of the manipulation of the enemy to keep the cure away from the people from diseases that he created and the Lord spoke about bluebells last year and this year again recently he said look for them bluebells very important and then a few days later we understand that they have suddenly reappeared in the UK where they had been dormant for centuries for centuries these are just some of the few current confirmations and signs that god continues to give us to point us to the fullness of his word concerning our lives concerning our nations concerning everything that he has said now what i expect from us is when we see these signs when we see the confirmation of the word, we need to go back to the word that now affects us directly. To hear now, again with an open mind, what God is saying. There is a lot that God has said concerning this nation. A lot. There is a lot God has said globally, but there is a lot concerning this nation, Botswana, that God has said. And we need to go back to that word and find out what the Lord is saying. Are we doing everything we need to be doing to prepare? God spoke about homeschooling our children. Are we doing everything we need to do to prepare? We're hearing about mass shootings in the United States of America that are very much planned, by the way, by the enemy for a bigger plan or the, the unfolding of their plan against humanity at this point in time. The Lord spoke about a seed in America last day. We are seeing that happening right about now. There are shortages of food and this has been planned and they continue to roll out their plans. God spoke about the fact that China was going to come against Taiwan. We are seeing them also doing drills around Taiwan. But the Lord said he will see Taiwan through. Hallelujah. What has God said concerning your nation? Are you taking it seriously? Are you allowing the Lord to let you know what role you have to play? Are you interceding for the nations? Are you interceding for Israel? Are you interceding for the United States of America? For the Lord said, whatever you see transpiring in the United States of America and Israel, is an indication of what is planned for the fullness of the globe. Are you taking the word of the Lord seriously? Are you praying for the ones that God said he wants in power to come into their positions and to assume the seeds they're supposed to assume? Or are you allowing things to just happen and you are saying if it is the will of the Lord, then he will make it happen. We partner with the Lord. He lets us know his plans. We partner with him so that the outcome. Now, here's the thing. No one can frustrate the word of the Lord. But for you to be part and puzzle of the victory, you have to align yourself with his word. I don't know if you can, you can under, you, you understand the difference in what I just said. The word of the Lord will definitely come to pass over the nations. 
but you decide whether you are going to be part of that unfolding by aligning yourself with that word or not. We see the men that were sent to Elisha by the king during the time where there was a famine. And when the men of the Lord of God declared what was going to take place the following day concerning the, the abundance that was going to come, he ridiculed the word. And because of that, he didn't, he saw it with his eyes, but he didn't live to partake of it. Because he didn't make himself one with the word of the Lord that was declared. Now, did he, his ridiculing of the word, did it stop the word from coming to pass? No. The word surely came to pass as it was spoken. But because he mocked the word of the Lord, because he didn't believe the word of the Lord, he saw it with his eyes, but he never partook of it. What are you doing with the word that you know? What are you doing to align yourself with that word? God has given a warning concerning schools. And he continues to warn us to pray for our children. He continues to warn us to be one with him in what he wants to do concerning us. I know some of the things that God is demanding of us in this time are huge adjustments. There are changes that are very hard to make because they're not easy. But you need to understand that on its own should be an indication to you that times are different. That what is about to take place is so big that it is calling for all these shifts to take place. Sometimes you don't even have to think too hard. The fact that he has declared it a new era, that should be enough for you to understand what is taking place because when we talk about an era we are talking about a completely different dispensation that which you knew is no longer what you see it's a completely different world altogether whatever you're going to tell of this generation there won't be any sign of it in the new hallelujah it will only be storytelling oh the spirit of the lord will reveal it to them america and canada used to be separate Canada was a, 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 a country on its own and America was a state on its own. Our honeys. This is the only one thing. There used to be a continent over here. There used to be a nation over here. There was land. The old world map and the new world map. That is the only way they will believe you. These are things. God is balanced. You can see that sometimes he takes you on a different route to address you, you know, things that affect you on a daily basis. Because he understands that he's he has to renew your mind to come up hither. Hallelujah. So now and then he will appeal to that which you know and understand. To that which you are keen to, because that's what that's what you know. But risk it the bar. Because knowledge or lack thereof will not stop what's coming. In fact, the Bible says, My people perish because of lack of knowledge. So we have to give you knowledge of what is happening. We have to give you understanding of what is happening. So what we saw in 2020 was a lot of theft where positions were concerned whether in the political space or wherever we saw theft taking place the word of the lord was frustrated and the opposite of that which the lord spoke is what took place but the lord made us understand that however this was not the first time this was taking place it's just that it's things that were not yet revealed 
because the time for them to be exposed had not yet come. God was still appealing to those that were being used by Satan to push his agenda of such dealings to stop and to repent. The cup of iniquity was not yet full. So we saw this happening under our nose. Nobody knew. Majority didn't know. And those that would raise their voice outside the covering of the Lord, the enemy would take out. They would be, you know, labeled as con conspiracy theorists and all sorts of things. And their voices would be drowned out. But no one can drown God's voice. That's the thing. Whether we like it or not, we are going to pay attention. And we are going to listen to what the Lord is saying. He spoke about files coming forth and they are coming forth. Just because we don't put confirmations of what is happening in this country doesn't mean things are not happening. I'm simply going by the instructions of the Lord. But all of you who listen to what the Lord has said or who have listened to what the Lord has said concerning this nation. You have seen some of the things the Lord has spoken that are already starting to take shape in this nation. In 2020, there was a lot of theft. Many cheated to get into the positions that they assume today. But nothing escapes the eye of the Lord. Nothing. Not what you do in the bathroom. Not what you do in your car. We he sees it all and he said in this season I'm shedding my light on all of it I've spoken about financial systems and financial corporations that are going to be judged in this time some of them are going to be bankrupt some of them are already making the news as we speak That have been the reason, one of the main reasons for the debt that people are in. God is dealing with it in this time. He's restoring back to his people that which was stolen. Hallelujah. So when we come back to this vision that the Lord gave, like I said, when God spoke, when he did, we were all excited over the word of the Lord. Because we thought it was going to happen exactly as he showed it to us. Because he omitted the fact that he's going to allow the thief to have his way for a little while. Before he allows for that which he spoke to take place. So it was a huge blow for those that heard the Lord. For those that believed the Lord. I can imagine that even for you personally, God spoke some things to you and you saw the opposite happening and it was a huge blow. So what I saw in this vision, that which depicted the church, there was a woman who depicted the church and there was another who depicted the world. And so what was taking place, this woman was so, the one that depicted the church was so discouraged, so demoralized because the enemy was, had assumed his position, had assumed the position that was meant for the church. And he was boastfully, you know, uh, making celebration after celebration after celebration concerning this position and doing things that were the opposite of what God wanted. And so this woman who depicted the church or who symbolized the church, was putting on or was trying to get ready so she she put on this silky dark blue uh material in the form of a skirt and that material exposed her thigh 
it was inappropriate and she knew that it was inappropriate and she didn't like it but she felt like she had no choice because that was the only thing to wear and so the Lord appears to her and tells her that she knows that this is not who she is and that she should put on what really would suit her and that which resembles her true character and so fast forward when she walks out to attend this event where she was expecting the enemy to yet again parade himself boastfully on something that he had stolen she walks out wearing something white and red and then as they get ready to see this big show from the enemy because that is what satan does he what he did he show hallelujah the things that are going to shock you in this hour things that you have been closely watching thinking is true is reality only to be made known that it is anything but reality it is going to shock you so as they were waiting to see the big reveal in yet another occasion that the enemy had done and gathered the people to come and see now the tables had turned suddenly the heavens opened somebody say suddenly didn't the lord said we are in a season of suddenness he said it shall be suddenly after suddenly hallelujah the heavens suddenly this woman wasn't even interceding at that point in time the church let's just Satan is supposed to have his way. Might as well watch. But suddenly, the heavens opened and I saw layers and layers of clouds resembling layers and layers of the different heavenly realms. But to the very highest level, where now there were no clouds, light came forth and a staircase came forth and a woman adorned with the most beautiful beautiful silver necklace that went down her shoulders it flowed down her shoulders and a beautiful gown and her name was Pusetu, which means restoration she came down now at that point in time the chest still couldn't see her I gave them an example this morning when I was explaining the dream to them. But we She came down so majestically and the way she was so collected, the confidence and the soft smile on her face that carried to the authority. And here's the thing about God's authority. God's authority is not boastful. Hallelujah. It just is. Do you understand what I'm saying? It just is. And if you carry the spirit of God, you can tell even when somebody is quiet, whether they have a spirit of pride or not she came down so majestically and she assumed the very seat that the enemy had been on and boasting over she came and she assumed that seat before she could hand it back to the church because the church well let's just say no hallelujah and she turned around and looked at the woman that resembled the church and said do you not perceive do you not perceive and understand what is taking place hallelujah i want to ask you today do you not perceive and understand what is taking place Mozalwai? Have you been so beat up by the enemy 
that you can't even tell right from wrong. You can't even tell when seasons have changed. Because for the longest time, it has been defeat after defeat after defeat to a point where now you are expecting defeat all the time. You are expecting it. That's your expectation. How could they be expectant? You are thinking of defeat as your expectation. As sad as it sounds, that is the current reality of the church. Hallelujah. This is what I'm doing in this hour. You are not really hearing him. You are waiting to hear Satan tell you. Next year is just like this year. That's when your eye is inclined and you are like, yes, you know what? That I understand. That I hear. That's my language. Defeat is my language. Hallelujah. Look at all the nations in Africa, especially North Africa, where they've never known anything other than colonization, genocide, civil wars, poverty of the highest degree, with all the natural resources, the riches, the potency of their land. That is all they've ever known. Some of them were born into that right about now. They're very old. They still haven't seen anything different. So you can understand why. You can understand why. But everything has its ending time. Hallelujah. Everything. Hallelujah. Bank on that. Hallelujah. Bank on the fact that why should Laura kill my miss? Wow. Hey. Can I jump? Wow. Hey. I grew up. Hallelujah. For many, many years in the enemy's camp. That is why they're not even taking God seriously. They, they haven't really been taking the word of God seriously. Even when his servants speak, they haven't been taking the word seriously because they are used to victory. And they are used to the church being defeated over and over and over and over again. When I talked about the part where the woman, the church, was wearing a silky, silky, uh, dark blue material that was showing her thigh. And the Lord came in and said, you know you can't wear that. That was to say that the church has now reached a point where now they are rethinking that walk with the Lord. Now they are questioning the ways of the Lord that they know or that they've always known to be true. Simply because the enemy's ways are seemingly working. They've seen the enemy winning over and over and over again such that now they're starting to think, you know what? Maybe this whole righteousness thing, I'm just taking it a little bit too far. Relax. Hallelujah. When you have been doing business, honest gains, Doing your business sin that also cause an alley bribery, cause an corruption, but cause a punier. What was it? What was it? Hm? Matuara Weneka. I'm a bribe. I'm a carate ready. I'm a everybody. Come so than a garage or a yes boy. I'm a woman with a garden. Yes, I'm with a boy. There's more nothing. Wait, 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 I take a call to your wife. And that is boy. 
Think about people like Esther. Just think about people like Mordecai and Esther. Think about the life they lived. Believing God, being faithful to the ways of the Lord. Never even imagining that one day they would literally, not even just be in a palace, but run the nation of those that had been their oppressors. Can you imagine that? Not even running your own nation, running other people's nations. God can take you from absolutely nothing. When it's, listen, and that's the thing about God. That's why Uska Hella Mudimupi. Mobusilum, Uska Hella Mudimupi. God can take you from zero to everything in one day. One day. Ole salanga kaleti, ibila ha robali busi, kawor ha hasi bribery hella bribery. Kora ha ubula one draw with the enemy, ubula ama ngo ora tausarat. Osanzo ho kora kidi noha, osanzo ha ho loka, osanzo ha ho tapagodi na keng. Os koro ho hundi ha ho hel. You have to sacrifice this and that, even sacrifice other people. Ho hundi ha ha ba roba, la ho bita boyan. It's out of bitterness. But deep down, why is that? Me, boy, boy, never go to God. But I'm rubbing my shoe. La how can you ask me to let you know? But you don't know the torment that comes with serving Satan for material gain. Hallelujah. Yes, Joseph is also a very good example. The boy was in prison. He was in prison. Na kone ba kailo roko pa di lehele nanzo kanto ara mudi mo akako kung sinya di toro tayo di toro molat pero hela zo tayo. Kaya mudi mo amu hutan ba niyo? You will know him in this season. Kaya kaya mudi mo amu hutan ba? Lam kuto argari. You will know him. God wants to give your enemies something to talk about before they have something to talk about where you are concerned. How long when I'm with you? Usually, you will experience both extremes in your lifetime, because there has to be a clear distinction between the time that you were still in bondage and training and hardship, and the glory of the Lord. Once it becomes evident that which you carry in the inside, once it becomes evident for all to see, there has to be something to compare. Hallelujah. Ya no lona le solehela hela gore hela ha o re yes to Jesus e be go ba go go sia ma gone go he doesn't get the glory he sets your enemies up to think that they have the upper hand over you only for him to show up and show off like never before in ways that you could have never imagined the church didn't do anything all they were asked to do was to stay righteous and to continue to declare the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, to stay righteous. That is all that was required of them. God moved on his own. When those heavens opened, it wasn't by reason of anything different they did. Because here's the thing I need you to understand. Anytime you think there's something that you need to do, to bring the blessings of the Lord to come to pass, you are in trouble. And you are most probably not going to make it in your Christian walk. Hallelujah. Because when it's all about works, 
Yes, God instructs us to do certain things. But God coming through in our lives has nothing to do with what we do. And when you don't have that pressure, that is when you are even more obedient to God. Because you don't feel like your life is literally depending on that. And then you try to be extra cautious. And you end up trying some extra things, thinking you are trying to please God. Hallelujah. Mudima Rata Rafasta ten days or both ninety days. And I saw Rosun to whom it had destiny help Arataho on day sixty, only for Resh, Umarapo Habaku Bo. When I could ten days. Cutting obedience is better than sacrifice. When you go for sacrifice, ten days, ninety days. Mudima is a Zexis o rata basadi ba bang khantse ntle ba ba na le na tshwananyana mo go bone o sia me go go lebega go khatisa ka na go re mathatalo na go gore spirituality ga le ka pesente le le na le go ile ba ka tsela e sele spirituality modimo ha ke tsa ela mitse mo ke ta nna ke le nga thalanyana ha le tellante God is all things. Do you, do, you, do you understand that? Just take it from some of the things that he says you shouldn't be that he is. He's a jealous God, but he says you shouldn't be jealous. So imagine how to get things done. How to get a girl, how to get a man. Hanur, they think they have an A game. Just think about Jesus. Hanur, you have an A game. You have an A game. God knew. Hanur, you have an A game. You have an A game. Abar, you have an A game. 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 But Esther, she knew. Mutho ka ruhitse sengwe. Ka keretse ne gore ena re go batega go ntse ja. Holy Spirit knows all things concerning your life. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit knows all things. He knows what your destiny helpers are looking for in a partner. I'm even talking about business wise. He knows how you are supposed to appear before your destiny help us. He knows how you are supposed to behave. He knows what will open doors for you. He knows what the man that is supposed to marry you likes. What makes him tick? What makes her tick? He knows all of those things. That is why Mujimar he doesn't even know what he likes. If you don't know you, what makes you think he knows who he is? You don't know you. Oh, you like the same movie, the same movies. We went to the same schools. I know how he, he likes his coffee. Your eyes are blue. Because he noticed that my eyes are not really black, they are bluish. So that means he knows. Satan knows the color of your eyes. Satan also knows how you like your coffee. All the carnal things Satan knows as well. So you can gauge things concerning your life and those that are supposed to be in your life based on the physical things you know, based on habits. Habits are not revelation. You study habits. Familiar spirits study habits. social media, it's super easy. You have written everything concerning your life. The, 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 the carnal things. It is all laid bare on social media. 
So you you will know where you want to go. Bucket list. bucket list. You've you've put everything there. So when he comes, he will let you know. I have a feeling you you would want to go to Dubai. Oh my God! How did you know? It's on your social media platform. What do you mean? How about we all know familiar spirits also know how you like it they know your desires they know but secret things about your true identity that is etched within your spirit man can only be revealed by the spirit of truth hallelujah and that is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Living God. It is the revealer of your true identity. So the reason why he doesn't know himself and you don't know you, so you can't even know who is supposed to be with you in business. Because you don't know each other. You only know what you think should be taking place. But when you engage the Spirit of God as your advisor in all things concerning your life, He will get you where you are supposed to get. And He will get you into the right connections, into the right circles. Whether in business, in your personal life, in ministry, all these things, Holy Spirit knows. Hallelujah. And because you are with the right people, even when you go through times of testing, you are able to survive the test of time. Why? You didn't put yourself there. God put you there. So because the foundation is rock, the foundation is Christ, you are able to withstand the turbulences, the storms that come your way because of who has put you where you are. So God in this time is calling us to our true identity as the church. Let us stop trying to mimic the world. We look so ridiculous to the world. The reason why they cannot even take us seriously when we preach the gospel to them is because we are subscribing to them and their ways. The church was trying to wear something that looked worldly. Because she was convinced that, that this must be how God truly is. Because what they're doing seems to be working. Just because somebody is a millionaire, a billionaire, a trillionaire, doesn't mean that God is with them. It doesn't mean that God has helped them to get the riches that they have. You need to know the source of what you look up to. You need to know the source of what you envy because you are not even supposed to envy to begin with. You need to know the source of those that give you motivational quotes on a daily basis. You need to understand is what you are feeding your spirit really that which is from God? Are the ways that you are learning concerning business, the ways of your God, can they be traced back to the word of the Lord? Or there are tricks of the devil on how to get riches in a way that is outside the ways of the living God. You need to ask yourself these questions. Don't just get into a bookstore and just start buying books because, oh, I know that this guy is successful and this guy is making money and this guy started. Some of them even have very appealing, you know, testimonies about their lives, about how they were taken from poverty to riches. And then you say to yourself, oh, this story is so cute. He used to live in his car and now he's a multi-billionaire. So I'm going to go. Just because he's, he lived in a car doesn't mean that God was with him in how he got his money. We cannot afford to be gullible anymore, church. You need to tame your appetite and go deeper. Go beyond your soul. Go beyond what you are longing for. 
God knows the dreams you have. God knows because he put them in you. He gave you the desires for a, a, a good life, a decent life. Whatever it is that you desire to do in this world, God has a way. There is a way. And you are about to see what happens when you take the other way to riches. The other way to blessings other than the ways of the Lord. The end is not pretty. And some of them might have escaped the consequences of that in the land of the living. But guaranteed, hell is making them understand well what it means to sell out from the ways of the Lord. Just to get ahead in life. Just to be applauded by those that are in this world. Hell will make them understand what they switched. What they gave up for the life they leaded in this world. So you need to know and understand very well every choice you make, everything you look up to, everything that you consume, everything that you want to take in and use to advance your life. Your mentors, the people you listen to, what are they teaching you? Is it bringing you closer to God or is it taking you further away from him? Is it teaching you the ways of this world that are sugar-coated with a little drizzle of God? Because it's not everybody who says God. That means your God. It is not everybody who thanks God that is talking about your God. That is talking about Jesus. There are other types of gods out there. It's not a new thing. So sometimes we blind ourselves from that. And we console ourselves to say that at least they acknowledge God. Which God? Satan also wants to be worshipped. He wants to be acknowledged. So they know which God they're talking about. Because their God expects them to acknowledge the fact that he's the one that is giving them everything that they have. The Lord said, don't wear that. Don't wear the world. Don't turn into that which you are not. Because it is not going to work for you. And she was, she was unhappy. Here's the thing, you know when you are, what you are doing is outside the will of God and the ways of God. Because your spirit men will attest to it. Even those that are subscribing to Satan, knowing very well that they are, they have sleepless nights. Why? Because you are made by God. So you were fashioned to worship him. And anytime you worship anything else, it's torment. Hallelujah. You were not made to worship snakes. Hallelujah. You were not fashioned for that. You were not fashioned for that. Hallelujah. You were not fashioned to live like that. Because we are not just talking about the extreme things. It can be just being in a relationship with somebody because of their money. You don't sleep. In the morning, you may put on makeup to look good and drive that nice car, but you know deep down you are tormented because you are not meant to live like that. Your father that brought you into this world knows the plans that he has for you. He knows how to give you that life. He himself is responsible for you. He's responsible for you. Hallelujah. You just need to find him. Go back to your, your father, your maker. Find him. And then make your petitions known to him. And then he will let you know. How is going to all go down? He will let you know the path that he has in store for you. 
Hallelujah. There's a word. I'm just going to briefly touch on it because it has everything to do with what we are talking about today that I gave you in the last segment that the Lord asked me to expound on. This is what the Lord, the word said. He said, do you know and understand who I am? And then he goes on to say, Hi, tele litsuha, litsuha ke satan. Do you know and understand in whom you have believed? None has been born that can frustrate my plans. None. None. Understand, when Satan fell and was thrown down to earth, he was dismantled of power. That means that he can only operate carnally. Do you understand my move? Hallelujah. The Lord said Satan can only operate carnally. When the Lord gave this word, I was taken in my spirit to Revelation chapter 12. I'm just going to read it out for you. Please go in and read it in your own private time. Now, this is what it says. Now, a great sign appeared. This is Revelation chapter 12. A great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet. And on her, on her head, this reminds me, the same day, the reason why it was so clear that the word, it was so clear that I was pointed to this word. He also spoke of a garland of stars uh, being bestowed with a garland of stars. Do you remember that? It was the same day. So he said, on her head, a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and seven horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Here the stars re referred to the angels, the holy angels, which were now fallen angels. And the dragon stood before the woman and was ready to, who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up into the wilderness. And the woman, sorry, the child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she was, where she has a place prepared by God that they should be, they should feed her 1260 days and war broke out in heaven michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought but they did not prevail nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer so the great dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and satan who deceives the whole world he was cast down, he was cast to earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the word, the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Hallelujah. If you paid attention to what the Lord said in the utterances, he said, Do you know and understand who I am. 
ha ithele le tshoga le tshoga le tshoswa ke satan do you know and understand in whom you have believed none none has been born that can frustrate my plans none understand when satan was thrown down to earth he was dismantled of power it's very important to get this part the the lord said he was dismantled of real power hallelujah that means he can only operate carnally he can only operate carnally i want you to hear this part Therefore rejoice O heavens and you who dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows he only has a short time now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child but the woman was given two wings of a great eagle the woman was given what two wings of a great eagle the one thing god is always always talking to us about is what come up higher come up higher hallelujah God is always calling us higher. Now here's the thing I want you to understand about why Satan why there was no place anymore in the high places in the highest of places where he used to be before but now there was no place found for him. It means that literally there was no place technically there was no place for him. he had to be cast to a lower place and then he's going to be cast to even a lower place where he wants to take you with him and that is to hell hallelujah so why was satan cast down to begin with the bible lets us know very well that he used to be the chief cherub so to speak he was the one that led the holy angels of the lord into worship of the living god but at one point sin came upon him and what was sin the desire to be worshiped hallelujah what came upon him the desire to be worshiped that is how sin was birthed in him everything else you see that he's doing is by reason of that one window that was opened the desire to be worshiped and because worship is only reserved for the maker the creator the god of the heavens and the earth the one and only living god who made him and everything else that is because true worship and worship is only for him and him alone it was a sin for him to desire to be worshiped himself hallelujah and because he now wanted a position that was not for him there was no place for him in heaven and here's the thing we need to understand some of you may may, may be asking yourselves what was he always a dragon because it it doesn't look like a dragon is not really an appealing thing it makes you, if you were to see a dragon it makes you fearful it's something scary you understand but we are told that before he fell he was the most beautiful angel Satan was beautiful before he fell from glory. Why was he beautiful? Because he had the closest proximity to worshiping God. Had to remove. He was the one who was closest to the living God and therefore because beauty radiates from God himself. by reason of him being closest to god that is why he was the most adorned 
the most beautiful angel. But then he didn't see all that he was. At one point, he didn't see the fact that it was all by reason of the fact that he was for, forever beholding and worshipping the one that was the source of his beauty. Hallelujah. And the minute he took his eyes off the one that was the source of his beauty, what came? What came? Ugliness. That which had come in his heart was now evident on the outside. Hallelujah. He was shaped up into exactly what was happening in his heart. His heart state, the state of his heart determined his outward appearance. Hallelujah. And because there was no more purity in his heart, and because purity can only be by reason of worshipping the one and only true God, beholding him and giving him his rightful place in your heart. Because now that was no longer the case. The opposite of purity crept in. Envy crept in. Jealousy crept in. Hallelujah. Pride crept in. And he wanted to be God. And therefore, the state of his heart is the one that then transformed even his outward appearance. So to the degree that he wanted to be God was to the degree that he was transformed into the opposite of what he wanted to be. He, didn't, he no longer wanted to behold it. He now wanted to take its place. Hallelujah. So he was cast down because there was no place for him anymore in the highest of places which demands purity. Hallelujah. So when we are told in the scripture that Satan was cast down because of his carnality and because he's been cast down to a realm, a physical realm, he has to now utilize physical things in order to wage war against humanity. I'm going somewhere with this. Hallelujah. He was now to use what? Physical things to wage war with humanity. Why? Because now he can only operate carnally. Hallelujah. So what did he do? We see that in Genesis, in him operating carnally, he used those that were vulnerable to him and his usage to build the Tower of Babel. Of Babel. What was he trying to do? He was trying to go back. And I'm going to still fight. They stand no chance. This is Satan. He tried to build the Tower of Babel. God just watched them build. They were trying to reach heaven. The spirit of Satan was in them of trying to play God. And, and trying to war against the living God, trying to enter the highest of places by other means other than the means that have been made, the means that has been made available for us, which is through the spirit of truth, which requires purity of heart and intentions of your heart, which is ultimately to do what? To worship the living God, to give him what is rightfully his, which is to give all praises to him, all worship to him. Hallelujah. 
to reference him in all the good things that we have in all the things that he has made available for you including just being you hallelujah satan wanted that and he still wants it today but because now he can only fight carnally for he has there was no place found for him anymore in the highest of places where true power lies he came down and because he knows he stands no chance with humanity i want you to listen very carefully at this point because he knows he stands no chance with us if we are to pick up the tools that have been made available for us by god which is to do what to come up higher if we are to pick up the woman that he came after the bible lets us know that she was given wings of an eagle why an eagle goes beyond the snake line beyond where satan can go hallelujah so she was given a way out to say satan has come down to you but i have given you a way to come up higher to go the opposite direction from where he's going so that he will not be successful in coming against you as my children god said he's now carnal he's now in your lane he's now in your territory of carnality so i need you to come out of carnality and to come up higher where is higher where god is seated and the bible lets us know that he's what his spirit his spirit when jesus spoke with the woman of samaria the samaritan woman when she was asking about matters of worship and she was asking about where they should worship and the ongoing war about jerusalem and jesus answered her and said woman there comes a time and indeed we're in that time where the father who is spirit because god is spirit where he requires those that will worship him in spirit and in truth hallelujah those that will what worship him in spirit and in truth hallelujah so now because satan has come down the bible says what happened when he came down god didn't just say eh le tla bona gore le tlaya ke o utse le kgolo na yo le tla bona gore le ba gama him and his angels that are with him this is what the bible says it says in verse 10 then i heard a loud voice saying in heaven this is what you were equipped with to come against him he says now salvation hallelujah salvation we know what salvation is right we can sum it up to the son of god because salvation has everything to do with coming into oneness with christ receiving him as your lord and your savior why because christ has been given the highest of places to sit there it's basically you coming into alliance or becoming one with him coming into partnership with him so that you can be invited to where he's sitting where satan cannot enter hallelujah salvation is an invitation to the highest of places that satan was cast out of but where you are invited so that you don't have to be in the same space with him so that you don't have to fight with him to be seated with Christ the bible says he is the head of all principalities and powers and you as you receive salvation are made complete in him hallelujah you are made complete in him it means that now satan cannot touch you by reason of the fact that you are in Christ and he cannot access that in two different places that in two different realms Christ is not carnal he's at the highest of places 
and he remains there why because he knows his place even though he's God he still assumes his place of function as God and knows that the father is the one he looks to for all things he honors the father Hagar, now that I'm made king of kings, lord of lords, I should aspire for this place where the father is. And because of that, he is the one, the, the one name that is echoed all over the world and beyond it. It's all about Jesus. Because Jesus made it all about the father. Hallelujah. Satan wanted to make it about himself and so he was even the Bible says it that now that you had aspired to go to exalt yourself to the highest of places I'm going to take you to the lowest of places hallelujah it says now salvation strength why do you need strength because God knows the enemy comes to wear you down Lela Pile you are beat down in your mind listen when your mind is tired when your mind works over time to process things it's not meant to process your body is bound to be also affected hallelujah physically what you are going to eat, what you are going to wear, where you are going to be 10 years from now. Who is going to marry you? Who is going to be your business partner? Who is going to give you your next meal? Who is going to give you your next opportunity? You are tired because your mind is, is working over time on matters that are not your responsibility on matters that you should not be pondering on when you are supposed to be mindful of god and worshiping him because you are mindful of him and knowing that as you marvel at him as you worship him as you look unto him all things concerning you shall fall into place by reason of you being captivated and being focused on your maker. Amen. For the Bible lets us know that the one thing he's looking for is worship. Amen. God doesn't want your money. Everything that you see, he has made it. You are the one who needs what he has. The one thing God is looking for from you is worship. And not carnal worship. True worship. Worship that comes by reason of his spirit. Worship that proceeds from the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. The Bible says you, you have been availed strength. You have been availed salvation. Now, these are tools for the hour that you need. It says you are also availed the kingdom of your God. Did we not say that we are in a time of kingdom come? Hallelujah. What is kingdom come? And then he says, and the power of his Christ has come the power of his Christ. And we know that power proceeds from the spirit of God. Everything you are being told that you have been equipped with has been put together, encompassed in one, which is the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. The spirit of truth. That is why when Christ answered the woman he said woman comes a time where it does not matter whether you are at the mountain or you are at Jerusalem God is looking for those that will worship him in spirit and in truth hallelujah in spirit and in truth you need to understand whom you are fighting 
You need to understand the tools that have been availed you. You need to understand how to be victorious in that which has already been won for you by Jesus Christ. Satan wants nothing but for you to fight a fight that has already been won and make you believe that the fight is still on. I'm going to say that again. Satan wears you out by making you fight a fight that is already won and making you think that the fight is still ongoing. Hallelujah. But when you align yourself with that which has been availed by God for you, which is the spirit of truth, to lead and guide you in the path of truth, then Satan has nothing on you. Hallelujah. He has nothing on you. The problem is you are fighting carnal. That is the problem. We are so carnal today. That is why we are not seeing the power. That is why we are not accessing the strength of God. I've told you this before. There were times I was only literally on a daily basis. I was only uh, sleeping three hours. Just three hours tops. But if you saw me, you wouldn't tell. And I was traveling a lot at that time. And I wasn't even using a plane. So you know how exhausted you get with travel. Instead of being jet lagged all the time. Because I had to travel every single week. Every single week without fail. And there were other commitments in my life at the time. And I would literally have a maximum of three hours to sleep. But his strength... With human strength, there was no way I could have survived that uh, that time, that period. And I'm not just talking about two weeks, three weeks. I'm talking about years of consistent travel and sleeping those hours and having other things to do. Three hours. But it wasn't because I knew what to drink and there were these robust, you know, facial masks that I was using. The spirit would give me strength, supernatural strength to do what is necessary for the hour. Hallelujah. The reason why Satan has his way is because we are fighting carnally. Hallelujah. The Bible lets us know that we are called to the good news. It's very, you know, Truth is everywhere. God, the problem is we try to be too deep with these things. Cut the news, good news. But we know that I can read by the news. The ones you hear on a daily basis on your televisions. You have your CNNs, you have your BBCs, you have what? Just ask yourself, what are the news they give you on a daily basis? How many times can you find them giving you good news? They're always telling you about all the bad things that are happening, some of which are not even as exaggerated as they make them out to be. Because they know the power of what you feed yourself. Satan is the one that is behind that system. Because he knows what he's doing. He's keeping you carnal. When he gives you friends that always gossip, he knows what he's doing. He's keeping you carnal so that he can be able to win over you. So that he can continue to torment you. So that he can continue to steal, kill, and destroy you. Because he's keeping you in a carnal realm. But God calls you to a higher place. God has availed wings for you to come up higher. That is why when you pray, he will keep on saying higher, higher, higher. What is he saying? Tap more into the spirit. Get out of your soul. Get out of the flesh. Get out of the lies. Get out of the deception. Come out, child of God. You have been a Christian for 20 years, 10 years, 5 years, and yet you wonder, why am I always, always defeated? Come out. 
come out of carnality. Everything is availed in the spirit. But Satan wants you to stop at the soul realm so that you don't get your soul and your flesh transformed by the spirit. Because for your flesh and your, your, your soul to be transformed, once you get saved, you first has, you have to go deeper where the spirit is. So that your spirit man can now be occupied by the right spirit, which is the spirit of God, the spirit of truth. Once Holy Spirit has his way with you and all the foul spirits of Satan have been removed from your spirit man, the spirit of gossip, the spirit of envy, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of pride, once all of these things have been removed by reason of the invasion of the spirit of God, when you allow it, by going deeper, by seeking God, it's more than five minutes over, he says, those that seek, those that seek, because some of you may be wondering, then how do you enter? How does the spirit take me over such that it can then take me to the highest of places where Satan cannot touch me? When you don't stop at the soul realm, the soul is the one that is all about feelings. Can a woman of God, you don't know what they did to me. That's the soul speaking. You have no idea what he did. That's why I can't forgive him. Soul speaking. Because when it's the spirit, you will know. The spirit speaks the heart of God. The spirit speaks the mind of God. That is why it transforms your mind. It transforms your mind. It doesn't matter what gifts you carry. If there's no transformation of the mind, those gifts are going to benefit Satan. doesn't matter what they are. They're not going to benefit you or the kingdom of God. They're going to benefit Satan. Why? You are interacting with those gifts from a carnal standpoint. And therefore, they're not yielding fruit in your life. Emotions are in the soul. Hallelujah. Your thoughts, your plans that are being, they are being influenced by everything that you have seen ever since you were a child that has been designed by Satan for you to see, by the way. And everything you've been through, the traumas that may be in your soul, it's everything the enemy has put in your life because he, he fights carnally. Usenama, Satan. Ulakanama. And he does everything in his power to keep you in the flesh. That is why when God shows up in your life, it will look as if he's insensitive to what you've been through. Sometimes when you are someone who suffers from insecurities, when you suffer from maybe anxiety of being around a lot of people, and there are certain things you feel like are triggers. And you think to yourself, just because I've come to the kingdom of God, it means God is going to make sure that he keeps out things that trigger me. Guess what? God comes in to deal with those things by putting you in those very situations. Not because he's a sadistic God. He doesn't love you. He wants you to come up higher. Hallelujah. He wants you to have a different mindset. He wants you to know that that has no power over you. Hallelujah. He wants you to know and understand who you are in him. That you are not defined by your experiences. That you can overcome what you thought you couldn't overcome. That once he renews your mind, you will see that situation differently. If Satan tells you 
if you fail from three, you fail from five, you will never become anything. God comes in. And when God comes in, you think, Majority of you will think it's not God. I'm giving an example of what can transpire. You can have a child. A failure. Because we live in a society where you've been told the only way to make it is when you have this, you have degree, you have masters, you have uh, a PhD. Because your mind has been programmed like that. You feel like there's no way out for your child other than for them to pass, but they're not passing. And then you start to believe God and you start to pray. And then God answers and that child fails even more than before. And then what happens? People in that situation, here's the thing you need to understand. I'm giving you a practical scenario that will help you understand what a true seeker is from someone that doesn't truly seek God. Someone that easily gives up on God. Some of you, it's either you start church hopping and not seek God for understanding to know what he wants to do in the life of your, your child or in your own life in case you are the individual going through that. But if you decide to seek him, if you decide to entreat him, to know and to understand what he's saying concerning your life and your assignment, and then he starts to open your eyes to the gifts that you carry, that have everything to do with your future, that were buried by that which has been designed as the only way out and the only educational system by the one that fights carnally by keeping you in a place of deception and a place of lack of knowledge. But once you start to entreat the Lord and then you go through the soul that is still very much in a place of disappointment and pain over the fact that you keep on losing where education is concerned according to you and you are wondering why lord why lord why lord but as long as you are still in the soul realm you are not getting answers and you get even more frustrated because you start thinking god has favorites that's the only explanation you can come with and you even start to be jealous over your neighbor's kid not knowing truth and not understanding truth but if you decide to entreat this God if you sit down and ask yourself does it make sense for God to want me to live in poverty does it make sense for God to want my children to suffer? It doesn't make sense. But I've been taught that, that this is the only way out for my child. It's if they pass Form 3 and Form 5 and they go to Baisaho or UB or Limkong Queen and my child keeps on hazard say 15 points, next time was 10 points. But I'm praying. And I keep saying, God, make my child pass. Is there something I'm missing? And then you go into the secret place. You start entreating the Lord. You say, Lord, reveal to me what your plans are. Now you're not saying, God, make my child pass. Mark the difference. Lord, I want to know your plans for this child. What is your assignment for this child? I want to know, Lord. And you don't just ask once. You keep entreating the Lord. You keep seeking. You keep seeking. You keep poking in that place. You keep waiting. You keep praising. And what's at your neck? Knowing that he's a good God. Knowing that you are talking to a king of kings. 
umoka, worshiping him, letting him know who he is in your life and refusing the report of the enemy that wants to accuse God in your heart. Letting him know who he is. Shaming the devil that wants you to speak ill of your God. And then God starts to reveal to you. Starts showing you your child. Now it's a franchise all over Africa. The ability to design furniture. That's why this are social studies. But what what has it to do with them? Has it to do with them? What are you talking about? Eli Mudi, Eli, the spirit of truth revealing truth to you. Are you talking about how to do it? Before you know it, the ones that you used to envy, now your child is employing them because they were doing their part. God had allowed them to excel. In that kind of environment, because that is the kind of environment they are called to. But your child specializes in something completely different. And no one can do it the way that they do it. Because it is what they've been called to do. It is their lay. That is you coming up higher. Where true answers are. It's in one answer. Rona kana ko ga rona go no po phunyeletsa ko university so ga ke makare and then you dra you drown that into your child o mmalela gore he will never amount to anything because that's what satan is telling you and that's what satan told you and that's what you are you are transferring to your child and then even na gore even na ka god is powerless and god is not answering prayers that is why even when we go to churches especially the prophetic churches we get so desperate that and i honestly believe that one of the reasons why people backslide is because they're always looking for a specific word for themselves even though they never really do anything with that word because power is not in the prophetic word that you are given power is in doing something with that god has revealed being obedient to every step that he is giving you to arrive to that which he has showed you and that cannot be done for you by anyone let me just make that clear to you that is the part where you now have to seek no one can do the seeking for you let me just make that one clear say i receive will not bring it receive the word catch the word go into prayer allow yourself to enter the spirit realm allow holy spirit to reveal to you step by step what you are supposed to do to get to the place of the realization of the prophetic word given to you and majority of the time when you enter because here's the thing when you seek when you enter everything is made known unto you because it's your life It is not the prophet's life. It's your life. So who is God going to reveal more about you to? You. If you are willing to see, God will give it to you. When you are given a prophetic word, it should just be a confirmation of what God has been showing you in bits and pieces. And then the prophet captures bits and pieces of the same thing gives you more puzzles to that pieces to the puzzle and then you are able to excel even the more with the word of the lord run with it and get to the realization of that word in your life god is looking for you my brothers and sisters to seek him to seek him because he carries all answers god didn't stop working in the time of acts god is still at work the promise we are carnal We we are playing and dilly dallying with the enemy. Ramosa na ne, kisho ni seru sidiya. Sel selim kora sa ridiya from seeing the actualization of the word of God over our lives. So amosa na ne, mozalwa. Focus on your God. Hala hawi zuri malibu ko hali taya na lutoko seba two hours. It's very simple. Don't answer. 
instead decide to go into prayer to spend time with the one that is actually going to give you answers to your life not the one that is going to make you more upset and then you are wondering why you are still where you are when do you spend time with god Five hours. The one who can actually shift things in your life. Two minutes. God is still calling you. He wants to bless you. It's his good pleasure to bless you. But you have to make up your mind. Are you going to use the wings that he has availed for you? Are you going to come up higher? Are you going to leave the ways of this world with this world? Are you going to be in this world but not be of this world? There's a difference. That is why those that come up higher those that subscribe to the spirit of truth you can tell they're different they talk different they behave different they are not swayed around by trends whether it's entertainment trends fashion trends church trends political trends whatever trends they are not moved they are people with focus and consistency because there are people who know themselves. They know where they are going. They know what the Lord has said about them. So even when things seemingly look different in the physical realm, they know what the Spirit has shown them and they are not shaken. They are not moved. Because God is saying a different thing altogether. And they know I don't have to be a part of what is unfolding here. It, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be my portion and it's not going to be my portion satan is carnally bringing famine but god the one i subscribe to says is a time of abundance so that is what i'm going to subscribe to and i'm going to seek him to know how i can partake of what he's doing in this time that we're in be jealous over your life, over your destiny, over what God wants to do in your life. Don't go to the grave with what God has given you, with the life that God has written of you. Live that life in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody once said, the graveyard is the most, most wealthiest of places, but wasted wealth. Because those that carried it didn't even know that they carried it. They lived in poverty, in despair. Because wealth doesn't only speak of material things. We talk about health. That's part of wealth. When you talk about mental stability, that's wealth. When you talk about a healthy body, that's wealth. When you talk about a healthy soul, that is wealth. Hallelujah. Mudimu ubata kuru utsile the fullness of what he died for for you. Don't try to be Christ. Urule na yu unangju embrace a poverty. It's your cross. Eh, muzalwa. Then why did Christ die for you? Why did he take your yoke that he is offering to take from you, so that you can receive the bountiness of what he has for you? But it's all locked up. In the spirit realm in the spirit realm and you need to spend time with him for you to tap into that realm you need to be focused you need to divorce this world you need to not even lie to yourself when one foot is in the world and the other foot is in Christ look warmness don't cheat yourself this is a season to wake up. Let's go to the page on the Facebook. I see for getting married over I receive. Salary alone. Five years away. Well, on to receive a donation. 
but nothing is happening. You need to be one with your God. Be one with your God. Hallelujah. Ke tla ya magone. Ke tsala gore modimo o buile le rona. There is a lot for us to ponder on. I encourage you to go to those scriptures for yourself. When you go through scripture, especially something that God is talking about at that particular hour, it helps you to get the power and the revelation for the revelation of that word to leap forth that is customized for you. That is uniquely designed by Holy Spirit just for you from the heart of the Father that you may know what these things mean for you so that you stop being on this hamster's wheel that Satan has you on you say wait a minute i'm not going to play this game any longer you get off it in your mind and you start allowing your mind to shape up according to the plans and the counsel of the living god hallelujah mudima le sogo ha tsha gore ke a omana bazalwane gore ke a lorape ke batla gore le tsoge le 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 khwahalle go tshelela modimo ga nnete le ke le bone modimo wa nnete a bere ka mo maselong a lona modimo ga a god is just looking for people that are tired of continuously being uh, molested by the enemy continuously experiencing theft destruction death in their lives people that seek life and life in abundance which has already been made available for us by Christ Jesus and all we have to do is pick up everything that has been availed us that we may come into the fullness of those things hallelujah heavenly father i thank you and i bless you for this time o king of kings this time where you are instilling within us knowledge and understanding of your ways that we may truly walk in your ways and we may not walk in the deceptive ways of the enemy that are masqueraded as your ways that we may wake up o king of kings to the devices of the enemy and not take ourselves off of all manner of deception looking unto Jesus by reason of becoming one with the spirit of truth by reason of intentionally seeking you in prayer in supplication O king of kings by intentionally focusing on you and you alone forsaking all things that are designed to keep us in a place of defeat I thank you O King of Kings in this very time that you are renewing the minds of your people that you are showing yourself mighty and strong on their behalf. I pray for every single individual listening O King of Kings that the word that you have declared this morning concerning restoration may be their portion O Lord. I pray that you will show them the way to come into the fullness of that word. The same way I saw the woman that depicted the church being instructed to not wear that which seemingly looked like that of someone who walks with you but indeed was of someone that was following the ways of this world. I pray that your people from this day forward will be delivered from the ways of this world and that they will come into the true ways of your kingdom the righteousness of Christ Jesus i pray o king of kings that as you have spoken of this hour that your angels your seraphims may visit your people and purge their mouth that only truth may proceed from their mouth that they may only confess that which heaven has written that which the father of glory has written concerning them concerning their children concerning their businesses concerning their marriages concerning their walk with you concerning their ministries concerning everything in their lives o oh lord that shapes up their lives according to that which you have called them to do and to be i pray o king of kings for the renewal of the minds of your people 
that transformation may take place in this time and that they may be found fit to assume the positions that you have in store for them in this very time. When Buseto came down, she wore upon herself, on her shoulders and on her neck, purity and grace. I therefore pray for the grace of purity to come upon your people. The grace of pure intentions in everything that they do, that they may qualify for the places you are calling them to of promotion. I pray, O King of Kings, that they may be adorned with the heavenly ways, that they may be aligned and synchronized with heaven and what heaven has to say concerning their lives in every season, in every hour, and in every day of their lives. May they be in the perfect will of what you are doing, O King of Kings. I pray for every single one of them that your will be established in their lives and in the lives of those that are part and puzzle of their lives. I pray that no door that you have ordained for them will be frustrated in the name of Jesus by lack of knowledge and understanding. For now, the skill to understand comes upon your people. The skill to walk with you comes upon your people. Purity of intentions comes upon your people. That even in terms of how they do business, Lord, you may be able to help them to know and understand what you have to say concerning their businesses, that they may do them according to the ways that glorify you. I thank you and I worship you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless and keep you for the rest of the evening. We will meet on Thursday at 7 p.m.